Hi everybody, it is almost 11 o'clock. Well, no, according to my clock, it is 11 a.m. And <clears throat> I have to clear my throat. So what I'm doing today is talking about macros and the stages of your keto journey. So right now I'm doing a little cooking and I thought it would be helpful to actually give you a visual um, and understand how to keep your fats high, your protein moderate, and your carbs under 25 net or less a day. Now, macros are just that. Macros are carbs, protein, and uh, fats. So we have to understand how they work in our body. And this is a question that I am always, always, always getting. So, hi, Selby. I see you there. I'm glad you showed up. I'm going to take my glasses off and I'm going to, well, I'll pop them up there. That way I know where I've got them at, right? So, that's what macros are in the first place. It's just understanding what percentage you want. On the ketogenic diet, it is a high fat, moderate protein, low carb diet. When I very first started out, I ate a lot of food on keto, and guess what? I lost a lot of weight. But, as I stayed keto, I noticed something. I was still keeping my fats high, but my portions were getting smaller, and I kind of started, you know, wondering and worrying, am I eating enough food? Yes, and give me a second and we'll get into it. I need to get a plate real quick to put this bacon on because I wanted to get it cooked up and started so that I wouldn't have to try to burn it while I was talking. <laughs> but I want to show you guys something and I think this is a really cool visual. I will also try to keep up with questions. They don't pop up like they do on Facebook. So here is a plate of bacon all cooked up and ready to rock and roll today. I'm going to take my bacon fat and I'm going to pour it in my little crock here because you want to keep all that good fat, right? And I'm going to get my, uh, my stove to come down really low on temp. And I'm going to do an old oven trick here. Okay, so when I first started keto, I'm going to, I'm going to see here. Oops. Hello, hello, hello. Um, when I first started keto, it was freedom. It, it was like, you know, I, for the first time ever in my life, I got to eat as much as I wanted, so long as I stuck to the food list, and I was actually full without feeling hungry five minutes later. That to me was, I mean, that was my saving grace. And let me tell you, I ate. Now, I'm going to do something here. Ah, oh, yay, I'm so glad. Guys, do me a favor, share, 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 share. Um, I really want these YouTube numbers to kind of go up. I want people, I want the word out there. So share it, share it on Facebook so we can pull people back over here to um, YouTube and they can get this information here. I don't always do everything here. Okay, so there we go. All right, so here's my typical. Um, oh. Hold one second. I, for, I forgot one piece of critical uh, information here. I wanted to show you guys something. This is, my granddaughter uses this tablet. I don't. I don't unless I need to show a visual here. So, messenger. I want to show you guys something. Um, should I show before or after? Try this off on my hip. Here we go. Uh, let's see. This thing will have to catch up to itself. It's good. So let's make some eggs. Right now I'm using breakfast because it's the easiest to cook. It's the easiest to do. But I'm going to show you what it looked, what what a plate of food looked like for me when I first started keto, and what it looks like now. Okay. This is a perfect example of how to keep your macros on point, still keep your fats up, still get enough food, and still lose weight. So I've got a skillet here, and I'm going to see here if I can manipulate this little uh, thingy bobber I've got going on. 
Yes, yes. And don't mind my kitchen because it is an absolute disaster. So, okay, on here, guys, this is going to be breakfast one, all right? This is, this is what I used to eat when I first started keto. And I think that it shows you what a difference it makes when you first start out. Um, I would grab a full tablespoon of butter, a full tablespoon of butter, and I would pop it in the skillet and get it all nice and melted. And then I'm going to grab a couple of plates real quick. And what will I do with this food when I get done with it, you ask? Well, I'll probably eat it all day long. <laughs> It'll be a it'll be a full day a full day's worth of food for me. Um, I just need to find me on that thing there. I wish I could set this up just a tad bit taller. I suppose I could. I guess I could go this way. Uh, nope, this way. Ah, uh, there we go. So yeah, I just melt this butter down in the pan. And the other thing that I would eat, and this was I had two breakfasts, you guys, when I was doing keto. Um, even when I was intermittent fasting, this is a great way to have breakfast. I would either have my two eggs in the morning, and I also have avocado, and I would eat bacon. That was my, that's my go-to now, okay? Let me show you. This is the size of avocados I buy. They, they are about the size of a baseball or as tennis ball. They're not real big. Sometimes the seeds in them are real big. Sometimes the seeds in them are real tiny. But I get them at Walmart. They usually run about 68 cents a piece. Oops. And while I'm here, let me show you something. Um, let me see if I can get right up in here. Do you see how nice and green that is? That's going to be a beautiful avocado. When you're at the store, you see the little stem right there? You pop it off, and if it's nice and green, you're going to have a really pretty avocado. If you open this up and it's kind of brown, you're going to have brown spots inside. That's just a little hack, a little tip. Um, my butter is melted in the skillet, so I'm going to do two eggs. And guys, another thing, cooking temperature. When you're cooking eggs, um, medium to just below medium, you're going to end up with beautiful eggs. Some people love eggs that have crispy edges, and some people like overcooked eggs. I can't stand the smell or taste of them. Just saying. So to the avocado, whether or not I was um, beginning keto, or here I am going on seven months keto, um, it's, it, the avocado has stayed the same. So what I do is I just, Take my avocado. I told you it was going to be pretty, didn't I tell you? I said so. I said, it's going to be pretty. And I would get that all sliced up and use a spoon. Give it a scoop. And you see how the slices are coming out? There we go. And pop it on your plate and then just kind of fan it. So there you go. Got some avocado going on. Now, I think I'll do, I think what I'll do is the plate that I did when I first started keto. That would be better. Um, so I've got my bacon. Now let's talk about this for a second. Um, I have yet to find bacon that doesn't have some sort of sugar in it uh, at the store. Now, since going to KetoCon, uh, Peterson Farm, Peterson Farms, uh, they make beautiful uncured, unsalted, nitro, nitrate-free bacon. Um, in order to get that, I would have to go online. So it might not always be convenient to get to the store. So I do buy bacon. It does say that it has a little bit of sugar, but it usually says it's less than 2% in volume on the cure that they're using. So. Um, I buy it and I haven't had any issues with cravings I haven't had any issues with weight loss or anything like that behind this so when I first started keto I'm gonna say four slices of bacon and do you know why because I would always eat one and put three on my plate
So I'm going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys exactly how I ate in the beginning. And so if you're a beginner out there, then there we go. And then here, look, I've got two or three slices. And I use the thick slice, and I like it like this, you guys. Do you see all the fat on my fingers? Oh, yeah. Yes. I like it to cook it to where it has a little bit of crisp, but mostly fat because I want that fat. So I'm going to say three because I'll eat two or three. I usually always eat one. As soon as it's done. <clears throat> Okay, so now my eggs are cooking. Now, the other thing that I did when I very first started was I found keto mug bread. For the sake of time, for the sake of video, I'm not going to make it, but I am going to use this. This is just going to be the, the piece of food that I put on my plate. This is the cinnamon bread that I made, and I made them in like little, little uh, small buns. And they smell so cinnamony, but we're going to pretend it's mug bread, okay? because that would go on my plate as well. Let's see if there's any comments. Boop, boop, boop. Yep, hello. I see some hellos and some highs. I don't, I don't know that they do like hearts and stuff like that on YouTube like they do on Facebook, but it is what it is. So anyway, so my plate is already coming along. I want you to see this. This is keto week one, keto week one. And I'm going to tell you, I did the macros on everything, just so that I could point it out to you. <clears throat> I'm going to show you here that my eggs are starting to finally bubble. Bubble, bubble, bubble. There we go. And they're in there. There we go. Love, 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 love my eggs. And while we're waiting for those eggs, I will go ahead and prep the avocado. Oh, there we go. I left a piece of this, the seed on there. There we go. Here, and I'm going to just slice it up just like I did the other one. And use the my spoon. Well, let's see here. And I'm just going to take this. Guys, avocados are so beautifully perfect for keto because they not only offer super high healthy fat, they also offer fiber. Oh, it's so good. So, so good. So, <clears throat> cooking at a lower temperature, too, is just healthier. I think it's if you give your food love, it loves you back. There we go. Can you see? I want you to see. Let's see here. Can we get in there? These are beautiful. They're so beautiful. And let's not forget salt. Now, when it comes to cooking your eggs, guys, let me come back up here. When it comes to cooking your eggs, you can do them however you like. I just prefer um, over medium. That's my favorite way, but you can definitely scramble them. You can use coconut oil. You can use avocado oil. You can use MCT oil. You can use bacon fat, tallow, lard, whichever fat that you like or have available so this is just how I like to do my eggs so and it doesn't take very long once you get them going here I'm gonna put this in here and slide this around and then I'm gonna put on two more eggs oh wait wait a second you thought I was gonna make a mistake didn't you but I didn't <laughs> These are my eggs. This was my breakfast, and sometimes I would even add some strawberries to this because I was very, very hungry. But here is my pan with that tablespoon of butter, and I am going to just pour every bit of that butter out on top of my eggs. And I'm going to start with another tablespoon of butter and let that go. But hey, wait, it's not over. Here's another tablespoon of butter, and I'm just going to, for Let's see. Look, I would take on my keto mug bread, which has butter in it, okay? I would take another tablespoon or half a tablespoon and smear it over my mug bread. 
that was a lot of fat, like three tablespoons worth of fat. An egg in my mug bread. If you stop and think about it, it is a lot, a lot, a lot of food. So I'm gonna get two more eggs down in this pan. But you know what the magic and the beauty of this breakfast is? This meal? I'm gonna see, I can see there are some comments there. Let me move this out of the way. I will set it over there. Of course, don't you know I have one egg left? Stick it in there. This is light salt, y'all. Again, when you're doing beginning keto, I'm going to use this because it's got potassium in it, and I'm going to sprinkle it all over my avocados and my eggs as well. I'm going to see what I'm going to see what's going on. See, I told you I'd lose my glasses. <laughs> Here we go. Do I have a belt on my jeans? No. No, I actually just got some hand-me-down belts somebody gave me. Um, I did, Christy. She gives a tip on there. Okay. Message retracted. Which bacon did I use? Well, today I'm using this thick slice bacon by Wright. You know, it's in Sam's Club. It's at Walmart. It's everywhere. It is the extra thick slice bacon and I like it because it again you can see look at it is glistening in fact it's got a little crunch it's got a little chew right there I keep doing that but guys don't get all grossed out I mean lives are fickle little things let me tell you I'm the only one eating my food so if I I touch my tongue it's not gross not to me because I'm gonna eat my own food <laughs> okay uh, you like how I crack up my eggs? Um, don't we? I, I don't have a. Let's see. If you don't have an Aldi's, Walmart. I mean, that's pretty much the the best you're gonna get here. So, <clears throat> gonna flip these eggs. Whoop! Boy, I did that quick. Give those a flip. And it's just funny how that works. Now. Let me see if I can pull this tablet up because I'm right there at plating and I want to show y'all something that I find just too cool. Well, let's see. Where's Nancy Childress? It's funny how you have to search for yourself on um, Messenger. Keep up. This is the slowest tablet in the whole wide world. Oh, there I am. There I am. Okay, so I want to show you guys. Oop. All right, this is, oh, let's see if I can't pull this in here. Uh, yes. Pull it in so that it is not glary. Hold on. I just wanted to give you a visual. Let's see. There we go. Oh, damn that light. So this is what the macros look like on both meals. Do you catch that? On both meals. So these eggs are done. I'm going to pull them out. All right. I got two eggs here. And they are pretty little eggs. See those beautiful little eggs right there? Again, I've got my butter from my skillet and I'm pouring it all over. Let me just turn this off. Now, you can see, let me see if I can tilt this downward so that you can get a good visual. Do you see all that butter? running around on my plate. I'm still gonna salt everything up because I like salt on my eggs and I need that potassium. That is what I eat now for breakfast compared to this plate of food that I used to eat for breakfast. Do you see the difference between the two? Seriously, like, but again, the macros are the same. They're the same. And that's the way it goes with everything that you eat. Um, when it's dinner, it's your second meal and you're having steak, um, I would start out with like a 10, 12, 13 ounce huge piece of meat, put butter on it, get some broccoli, have a salad, put dressing on it. And I was able to eat that in the beginning. Now I eat 
a six ounce portion of steak and I eat some broccoli with fat all over it and I still have a salad smaller with fat on it. The portion size is cut in half but the fat still remains the same. So that's how I'm able to continuously keep my weight loss on the move because I keep my fats high. And anytime you're cooking with fat, you can take that fat right out of the pan and pour it all over your food. Say for instance, you were sauteing some um, zucchini and you took it all out of the pan and you leave the fat in the pan. That's where I would be like taking some of it and drizzling, depending on how much there was, all over my food because I wanna eat every bit of fat that I can. Let's see, let's see what comments are here. Okay, and are you lo uh, are you losing Patty Ann? I do net carbs, but been stuck for two months. I don't track anything but 20 carbs, not net carbs. Okay, so that's another thing that some people do, and it's been recommended, you guys, as far as like when you're doing carbs, ver total carbs versus net carbs. Um, when it's vegetables, things like that, salad, vegetables, broccoli, Brussels, um, green beans, it doesn't matter. I don't track any of those veg. I'm always mindful. I don't track the others, but I'm more mindful. Say, for instance, I was at the store and I decided to, you know, eat, well, eat a piece of this cinnamon bread. I mean, you could, you could easily look at it and go, well, it's eight net carbs or total carbs, but it's only two net. Do you want to add that? the total if this is the only piece of food that I'm gonna to eat today um, that is not a vegetable or a, a protein or you're something like that if this is the only carby thing I'm gonna eat I'm not gonna worry about it now if I was to eat two or three of these then I would be realizing that I'm eating 24 total carbs so it would not be good to just eat uh, net carbs because carbs are carbs no matter what guys all right so i'm gonna pick you up and move you a little bit here golly because i'm done cooking at the stove and we can just move on with our conversation um ah ah that makes me happy my kids pretty appreciate my cooking let me tell you <laughs> so onward and upward by the way i was using this brand of butter this new pasture raised butter it's by vital farms it's all over the place now um, i wish that i had been part of the there's a panel out a youtube approved or not approved keto approved panel um, i just in, accepted the invitation and they they did butter reviews last month i wish i could have got in on it i give this props this is american USA made in the USA pasture raised butter but here's my issue with it um, it tastes great why is it more expensive than imported Kerrygold Irish butter I would think that it would be cheaper to make product here in the United States and sell it for less than imported Irish butter so that was that's one of my issues I, I just bought the salted and the unsalted so i'm trying them out okay um flavor wise it's delicious i think i still like the irish butter a little bit more now i am going to be going out today and buying a two pound roll solid butter ball of amish butter they're carrying it at the granary it's pasture raised organic amish two pounds of butter for 9.98 guess what this girl's gonna do well, moving on to Amish butter. Okay, let me see here. Um, are you a... Uh, okay, Adam, let's not go there. Let's see. Um, let's see. M Myra says, that's great. Lost 30 inches last year and hubby 50 but stuck now. Okay, need to break it. So if you're stuck, it's probably time for some fasting. I don't know if you're already doing intermittent fasting or if you are, and you've already a year in, you should probably be doing some OMAD. Because our bodies just get used to the same old routine. And it actually stresses our body. Your body just says, okay, this is what it is, and I'm just gonna hold, I'm gonna stay right here in this pattern. But when you keep things moving and changing, then your body doesn't know which direction to go. So I say change it up. I'm always saying change it up, change it up. Um, 
OMAD is great because you're going to eat once a day. You're not going to eat a whole day's worth of food in one meal. You're just going to have one normal size meal. For instance, beginning keto meal, okay, this was what I ate in the beginning. Now, for OMAD, this would be completely appropriate if I was only eating one meal a day because I've got good protein, I've got good fat, I've got good fiber, and this meal would hold me for 24 hours. And when it, while it's holding for 24 hours, it is going to be able to do the work on my body, body and eat fat off of my body instead of just the calories. I mean, it's like anything. If we're eating for maintenance, we're not going to be losing weight. That's that. All right. Um, I do I have sometimes but not OMAD yet I think you're right well and especially if you're a year in or close to a year in IF should be just part of your routine most people don't realize that they're doing IF on the regular um, I, I fast every single day and I was doing it without realizing it why because I don't like breakfast so and I don't do bulletproof coffees so I wake up in the morning and the only thing I'm drinking is black coffee in the morning and or switch to water but I'm not even getting hungry until noon one two o'clock in the afternoon so that's when I'm gonna have my first meal sometimes my first meal might be two eggs three slices of bacon and some avocado and that's going to hold me for a long time. It's going to hold me three, four, or five hours. So around five or six when I get hungry, I might opt for, let me show you here. I got a little left. My husband, my husband got to take it all. And this is what I got. But even so, this is easy peasy beefy collie rice. It's so fast and easy to make up. So I could get a bowl of this probably about a cup and a half to two cups of it. Top it with some sour cream, some cheese, some cilantro, and bam, I'm done. And I won't eat again until noon, one o'clock, two o'clock the next day. That's intermittent fasting. That gives your body time to do anywhere from 16 to 18 hours of fasting. And <clears throat> what's taking place during that time is called autophagy. Your body is doing cellular regeneration, basically. Your body is saying, hey, these cells are on their way out. We're going to go ahead and clean them out. We're going to let cellular regeneration take place. You'll notice your skin is looking better. You notice your skin is looking tighter. You notice your stomach is getting flatter, and you'll be losing inches when you're doing your intermittent fasting. One meal a day is the next phase. Once you've got, once you have been doing intermittent fasting consistently um, without any issues, you're definitely ready for OMAD, and by then you're fat adapted. Your body has become a fat burning machine. It's so used to using its own fat stores. You don't have the cravings. You're not hungry anymore. Um, a little bit of food. I mean, I go hours and hours without thinking about food. <laughs> so one meal a day comes along, and again, you can fix yourself. If you're a person who loves to eat breakfast, then that, let that be your eating time. Eat, and then don't eat until you eat breakfast the next day. If you're doing OMAD and you're just starting out and you're feeling hungry, then definitely now is the time to pull out a bulletproof coffee or tea. I like matcha tea. I think it's great. It's You can add a little heavy cream to it. You could add a little bit of um, MCT oil, which coconut oil, whichever light flavored oil you want and get extra fat in. Just a boost, just something to take away your hunger so that you can do one meal a day. And again, you will notice the scale going down. Yes. Um, I have never been able to lose my flabby upper arms and they are finally shrinking with this way of eating. Yes, girl, look guys, I am right there with you. I mean, I show you guys all the time. This is like the most embarrassing part of my body that is exposed all the time. And I get so self-conscious, it's, it's unreal. But here I am seven months into keto and tops. I, I've always had to buy a larger size top just to accommodate my arm or jackets. I, there's so many clothes I couldn't even wear because I couldn't get my arms into them. 
Um, this way of eating with the autophagy, it is shrinking. And now that I've started working out, it is, it, it's coming along. I, I actually have some hope. Do I have unrealistic expectations? No, but I do have hope that they aren't gonna recipes. You'll see a picture of nutritional yeast bread. Tap on it. It is the very first recipe in that post, and it is so easy. Um, I double that recipe all the time now because it makes a family size portion, and because my family loves it. Go figure. They're not even keto in there. Ah, husband's calling me. <laughs> Little interruption. I told him I was going to be live at 11. So, anywho. Let me see here. But that's what it, where you will find that. Crack slaw is fabulous. There are so many wonderful dishes. Let's see. La la la. Do you recommend IF when you're just starting keto? No, I do not. Your first one, two, and three weeks of keto should just be about learning how to eat keto. Whole clean foods. And I tell everybody, strive for five days a week of whole food eating, which means eating things like the eggs and the avocado and the bacon. You notice there's no cheese on that. There's no sour cream. There's no heavy whipping cream. Um, they are keto approved foods, but I always recommend you're going to get the, the best bang out of eating right and learning to eat right in the beginning. Um, people tend to jump on the cheese and dairy bandwagon when they start keto and you'll lose some weight, but then immediately you, you, you slow down really fast. But if you can keep away from the dairy for the first week or two and just learn to eat clean. And then, you know, like I said, grill you up some meat, put some fat over it, get some good veg, put some fat over it. Um, <clears throat> if you're making a pot roast, use the drippings. Mm, get some good cauliflower mash. You can buy it frozen, the bird's eye. Uh, cauliflower mash, yum. Just eat clean. And then, once you hit weeks three and four, you're gonna notice a huge drop in your appetite. You're gonna notice how you're struggling to find food that you're like, I'm just full and I don't want food. That's when intermittent fasting should start in weeks three or four, depending on how well you came through your <laughs> carb withdrawal and addiction. So, Nancy, do you recommend no keto desserts the first few weeks or just once in a while, regardless of how long you were following keto plan? Well, I have to say that when I started keto, I had keto desserts two or three times a week. I really did. I lost 11 pounds my first week in keto, and I ate keto desserts three times a week. I would get a box of sugar-free Walmart sugar-free Jello pudding, and I would use almond milk and mix it up and then I'd get, you know, a little bit of heavy cream and I'd whip it up and I'd use a little sweetener and I would make this big chocolate mousse. And I would eat that two or three, you know, because it makes half cup servings. So whatever, it makes it easily two or three servings. And I would eat that. I also would make flourless uh, chocolate mug cakes and I would use the mousse that I made with the pudding and frost the cake. And probably for the first Four or five weeks I was diligent about oh it's nighttime it's time for dessert and then what happened as I continued along uh, my journey is my cravings started going away then the, the need for the sweets started going away and now once or twice a month I enjoy it but I tell everybody you know it it was it was a godsend I did make uh, fat bombs and I would eat you know maybe two or three fat bombs a week, and then I would have two or three desserts a week. I just kind of, you know, interchange it. Maybe one day I was having dessert, the next day I was having a few fat bombs in the afternoon. And it was just how I got past my carb and sugar addiction. But the longer you stay keto, uh, the fewer cravings for the sweets you will have. I just enjoy making them now for the heck of making them because I enjoy getting in the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> Linda says, uh, been chasing you on Facebook. Glad to find you here. You are so inspiring. Oh, thank you. Um, what about low carb tortillas and buns and which brands? Um, well, I will tell you, I haven't tried any particular brand of a tortilla. Bread, on the other hand, Fox Hill Kitchen to me is hands down. If you're going to buy keto bread, it was delicious. I had to. I got to personally meet the company. I personally got to taste their products, and I'm going to tell you, it's as close to my bread as I've come so far. I've tried 
different brands of bread. As a matter of fact, uh, I, today was supposed to be my clean out, my refrigerator clean out day. Because it's trash day here, so I always like to clean the kitchen out. But here, I want to tell you guys something. So this paleo bread that I bought, it is the wettest, nastiest. I've been plugging through it slowly but surely, and I'm totally done with it now. You see how, how it just kind of breaks up, but they were able to come up with loaves, but it's wet. I don't care how long you toast this bread, it feels wet. Maybe because their first ingredient is water. Maybe because their second ingredient is eggs. Maybe, maybe that's why it's just so darn wet. And $10.79 for a one and a half pound loaf. I'm just gonna toss it in the trash. There. <laughs> but those breads, Fox Hill Kitchen's bread, they have awesome buns, they've got everything bagels, they've got little down or bread things. They, they, I, they were like, Oh, I feel the love for y'all, man, because it's so close to my stuff. Very good. Is it going to be pricey? Mm-hmm. Yeah, why do you think I developed my own recipe? So that I could just have bread. <laughs> and my family loves it. I'm still working on a loaf. I have yet to achieve loaf. And speaking of that, all right, so I did do the cinnamon bread. And as you can see, like I said, it is, um, you know, smell cinnamony. I haven't taken a bite yet today, so. Has some sweetness. Tastes like cinnamon. Easily toastable. And you could put some butter on it. And it, it's, it's, it's cinnamon bread. Very, very good. And I don't know what the macros on this particular batch are yet. You see how dark they are? So if you were out there making bread and you go, oh my God, it was like it was burning. This stuff was steaming right at the end. I mean, there was it was like starting to get smoke coming off of it. But it is dark, but it's really, really tasty. And I think making an egg a sandwich out of this with some bacon or some sausage or some ham and maybe a slice of cheese, this is really one of those good ideas. I mean... You get that cinnamon, you get that sweet, you can put your breakfast stack on here, wrap it in a, a baggie or sell it a parchment paper and off to work you go. A whole meal on the go. Cream cheese would be delicious too. Mmm, yes, good, good idea with the cream cheese. I love that idea. So let me see here, cause I have to do the, do, does, yes, the bread freeze as well. I have froze it, I froze it. I have froze it. <laughs> yes, I have put it in the freezer and it freezes well. My only issue at my house is that it never lasts long enough to be frozen. I did it just to make sure and it's fine. So again, you can make these up. I've tried double batching things. Every time I try to do a double batch of this bread, whether it's the cinnamon or the regular, it doesn't rise as well. So not sure what that's about. So I make a batch one at a time. It just works easier out that way. And again, you could freeze it. I keep it in a plastic bag. I keep it in the fridge. It'll hold for a week to two weeks in the fridge, just like that. It has no preservatives in it. So if you stick it in your cabinet, uh, about day six, it'll be useless and green. Alrighty, let's see what we got going on here. Oh, let's see. Oh my God, that cinnamon bread. I don't care how brown or even flaming, <laughs> right? It is, it is good. It is super, super, super delicious. Uh, do you use a bread machine or just the oven? I don't own a bread machine, so just the oven for me. And I, I don't know if you can use that. If you try it, you let me know because I have all kinds of people who try to do different things and they get great results. So you could take this bread. I mean, some people say, well, can I use coconut flour? Some people are doing a mixture of the different flours or adding flax or you know it's it's just fun to watch what's happening with this bread um i'm gonna go on here and let's see uh mug bread i will have to post one i, I it's such one of those common things it's like um i think it's uh, three tablespoons of almond flour a tablespoon of butter one egg and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder and a pinch of salt 
that's it. You just melt your butter in the mug with the microwave. Then you add your flowers and your egg and you just stir it really good and you pop it in the microwave for 90 seconds and that's how you do mug bread. Super, super, super fast. Now, one of the other things that I, I think will just go on here, um, broth, bone broth. People want to know, chicken, beef, it doesn't matter. Of course, homemade bone broth is always going to be your best, but a lot of people just don't have time or they don't have an instant pot and they don't have time to eight hours of slow cooking on the stove. So what do you do when you want bone broth? Well, I will show you that I use this one sparingly. I don't care for it, but in a pinch, it's not going to hurt you, okay? What, it's organic bone broth made with beef stock that is slow simmer, simmered for eight hours. There is no jiggle to this, okay? So, to me, it's glorified beef broth. But it works like when I make an easy peasy collie rice because I just need a splash of it, you know? Um... If you are new to keto, though, and you're needing some sort of broth during the day, I always tell everybody, mid-afternoon or in the evenings, get a cup of nice hot broth, make sure you've salted it, and add butter to it, and sip on it. It's so good. And true bone broth will be healing as well. It will, it will heal gut issues, leaky gut. It's good for your hair. It's good for your nails. It's good for your skin. Um, and it also just satisfies you really, really well. So, um, and, and you're getting that sodium in, which is important, especially in the beginning when you are losing a lot of sodium because you're running to the bathroom. Um, first, let's say Sandra says, I think I'll try a mix of oat fiber with almond flour in your bread recipes to lower the carbs even more. There you go. Let's see, your bread with yeast is genius. I'll never make a baking powder bread again. You know, the, the funny thing, because look here I didn't realize this and, and I should have but when I decided to use nutritional yeast and yeast and it said rapid rise I thought well oh, it'll it'll just it'll be what's actually making it rise but come to find out it doesn't all it does is add um, all it does is add the flavor so in the beginning people were like that hot water will kill it and I'm like oh my gosh add it at the end it doesn't matter. I add it all in the beginning now. It doesn't matter. It's the egg whites and the vinegar that are giving that bread the lift. You don't have the baking powder flavor. Now, I will tell you, when it came down to, uh, what do I do with this? I'm back on the subject again, aren't I? When I made the little mini loaf yesterday, I sliced it. And this is what I ended up with texturally. So, you know, it is just it, it is just a little mini loaf. It was only this long and it was only this tall. And um, see, it, it, it got crunched a little bit. The top on this one was a little hollow, but the texture was there on that, on that bread. Um, and I like that it was actually more bread-like consistency. So, but again, I felt like it, was, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a complete success, so that means it was kind of a failure, right? But yeah, the, the little tops on them, this was the end piece. This was the crust of it. But when I was doing the cinnamon bread, I went ahead and I still added the yeast and I still added the nutritional yeast, but I went ahead and added a teaspoon of baking powder. You cannot taste the baking powder. You still get the yeast and the cinnamon. It still tastes like cinnamon bread. But I'm just trying to figure out how I can adjust this recipe to make a loaf, a loaf, loaf. And I got a couple ideas. And when I get them all worked out, I will definitely share with everybody for sure um, <clears throat> let's see let's see let's see here we go Bonnie is all that salt good if you have high blood pressure yes and here's why first of all it's a myth that salt is gonna raise your blood pressure now I will say this you have to use sea salt good quality sea salt it can be the pink Himalayan it could be the gray stuff it does as long as you know it's good sea salt because regular table salt is 99% sodium chloride and it's been stripped of all the minerals and benefits that regular sea salt has. Um, eating a high fat moderate protein ketogenic lifestyle along with your salt will actually lower your blood pressure and you have a very good shot. A good shot, I'm not guaranteeing it, but you have a good shot of being off of medication if you're already on it, okay? Um, it, it's just a myth. So um, back onto the bone broth. 
I want to show you, this is a product I found this week. Um, I wish it wasn't in reverse, but maybe you guys can read it. To me, it looks like it's all in backwards, but it is Lono Life grass-fed, gluten-free, no sugar added beef bone broth. Promising, promising. I haven't got to try it. It says paleo here on the bottom, and there are four eight ounce or four packages in here, four uh, powdery packages, and all you have to do is add eight ounces of water, basically. But what I liked was um, it's beef collagen first is the very first ingredient, chicory root, beef salt, um, yeast extract, natural flavors, black pepper, and sage. So. Um, no, there's nothing artificial about awesome. That's what they say. Our beef bone broth is more flavorful and better for you. It's a healthy choice uh, crafted from roasted bones. Yes, yes. So, yeah, um, it does say total carbohydrates are three, and it does say dietary fiber is three. And I will tell you that chicory root has a sweetness to it. It is a keto-friendly product that we can use, and it's... Uh, it's very fiber, high fiber, so we zero it out. So yeah, I'm thinking you can get four packages here. I paid $5.47, but this is very promising because you can just drink it, mix it up and drink it, or you can mix it up and use it for any of your recipes. I think that's great. Uh, let's see here. I'll tell you a good yogurt, and that is by Peak, but the problem is they're only available uh, on the West Coast at this time, and I can't get, a, I can't. They're fixing to expand, though, because they did contact me and say they are. Ha, ha, ha. Thanks so much. I'm not yelling. Always typing caps. Terrible eyes aren't what they used to be. Oh, that's fine, Bonnie. I get it. I get it. <clears throat> Let's see here. The thing about plain yogurt is it's going to be your lowest carb choice, and you just want to get full fat. Um, I, I don't use it as often because it's, to me, I'm, I'd rather just have sour cream. You can sweeten sour cream and or yogurt. And, yes, you could get probiotics out of the, the yogurt, but that's just me. Aw, thank you, Myra. All right, so, anywho... Last but not least, guys, I want to talk to you about collagen. All right. This is by Further Foods, I think. Yes. It, these are collagen peptides. It says anti-aging on it. 100% pure protein on it. Um, this is another way. If you're not into making bone broth and having bone broth all the time, you can get collagen. And I don't, I don't go for the ones that say, oh, drink collagen and lose weight because I don't do that. But what I do like about this is you could add this to some broth and pump it up and make it bone broth. Or you could put these in your drinks and drink them or smoothies. Um, it's a good way to get that collagen in without having to chew and gnaw on gristle and cartilage and all that other good stuff. I mean, guys might like to do that, but ain't my thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, if you guys enjoyed this, do me a favor. Um, please share. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you want to get notifications when I'm going to go live, hit that little subs uh, notifications bell. And I think they're much better at notifying you when somebody's live. I know it gets confusing on Facebook because they're like, I never get the notification when you're going to go live. But on YouTube, you can hit it and you'll get a little drop down that says, oh, look, there's Keto for Real Life people. They're live. So hit that notification. Um, also, I want to let you know that I'm on Instagram, Twitter. If you are not on, a fa on Facebook and you're just a YouTuber, go to Facebook. You can find the Keto for Real Life people page and you can find the keto for real life people group and everybody's welcome ah uh, let's see it says i like your videos oh and then it disappeared <laughs> also guys um i do have a patreon account so if you would like to sponsor keto for real life people and help me make better content and keep doing what i'm doing um it'll be in the link in the drop down and let me explain to you guys a drop down is right where the title of the video is. You'll see a little little arrow thing. You tap it, it drops down. You'll find links. That's where you'll find my recipes if I'm doing a cooking one. 
you'll find it in the drop down along with the macros. You guys have been great. Thank you for showing up. Please, please like and share and subscribe if you haven't. Remember, moderate protein, low carb, high fat, and get you some. I set that out of order, but you know, my brain is already trying to see and talk. It's just one of those things. Uh, you're welcome. All right, guys. I'll catch you next time. I'm going to be coming on quite a bit more, so get ready.